bad and switching gears now on this show we previously discussed cancel culture and the impact that one false move can have on anyone from social media influencers to corporations and even pop culture icons but what happens when fans start demanding celebrities speak up about certain issues and what happens when your favorite artist may support your least favorite politician well joining us now to break this all down for us is tv host and pop culture expert john murray john Good to have you back on the show. So what do you think has caused the, the shift from your occasional artists speaking up about issues to fans now expecting it and even demanding it? Well, you know, Lindsay, historically, politics and celebrity culture uh, have always gone in hand in hand. I mean, film legends like Jane Fonda and Harry Belafonte, they're as well known for their political activism as they are for their illustrious film careers. I mean, you have music artists like James Brown and Bob Dylan, Cher and Aretha Franklin. They've recorded legendary protest songs and anthems. I mean, Senator Al Franken was a comic. Jerry Springer was a mayor. WWE wrestler Jesse Ventura and action star Mr. I'll Be Back, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger, were both guns. Governors. President Ronald Reagan was a Hollywood star. And he, of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the current occupant soon departing in the White House. He's a reality star. So we know that pop culture and politics go hand in hand like peanut butter and jelly. And the moment Lindsay Lohan and Kim Kardashian were strolling through the White House Correspondents Association dinners, we know that this is something that was only going to get elevated. Now, what are some recent scenarios of celebrities making controversial donations or collaborating with other celebrities where they face what you would consider unfair backlash. But most recently, we saw Carrie Underwood. She was asking Jesus to take the wheel because a segment of her fans were outraged at the idea that she had recorded a duet, a remake of Leonard Cohen's famous Hallelujah with Democrat John Legend. They said inflammatory things about John Legend and even some racially insensitive things about his involvement in social activism and Black Lives Matter. And then members of the historically black sorority, the Alpha Kappa Alphas, they were celebrating Vice President-elect, their soror, Kamala Harris. He Hit it to the White House in a historic way. But then they saw their other soror, Grammy-winning jazz great Cassandra Wilson, go full MAGA on her timeline. Now, this is a woman who released a song called Justice in 2002, but now she's talking about Trump really won the election and saying things that would make you think Rudy Giuliani had hijacked her page. And then Ricky Schroeder, the child star who we know for NYPD Blue and Silver Spoons, he had to recently call the police because he said he was getting death threats online after the lawyer for Kyle Rittenhouse He's the uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin shooter who allegedly killed two people and injured another. Well, Ricky put up half of his $2 million bail. So, you know, these are the things that cause fans to act out and respond no matter what side of the fence they fall on. So I guess you're saying it's not safe for me to ski wee, John. We'll just keep going. We'll keep going. So, oh, that's what your song was, too. <laughs> Paul Cassandra Wilson. It, it, Call her up. <laughs> <laughs> so on the flip side, it also seems that silence isn't an option these days either. Can artists survive by staying silent? and not taking a stand. You know, there's a famous Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. quote that says, we will remember the silence of our friends. And so reggaeton artist Bad Bunny, who has been an outspoken uh, activist on so many other situations with marginalized groups, he was conspicuously quiet after the murder of George Floyd. And because reggaeton derives from the whole black culture, people were upset with him and he got a lot of backlash. He ultimately came out and spoke out. And there's a current groundswell of people, they're online asking Bishop T.D. Jakes to come out and denounce uh, Evangelist Paula White. She's Trump's spiritual advisor. Now, she's gone uh, viral twice in the last few weeks, first for this highly mocked prayer where she was asking for angels from Africa and South America to come overturn the election, but then in a sermon where she likened the Black Lives Matter movement to the KKK. You know, she actually became famous and also rich, preaching in black churches before her political association with Trump. And people think because uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes called her a daughter in ministry at validate her, and now they want him to invalidate her. But then you have people who are loud, Lindsay, like the K-pop fans. You know, BTS, they encourage their fans to go and hijack racist uh, and inappropriate hashtags online, and we know they're responsible for helping to sabotage Trump's uh, Tulsa rally through TikTok. So, you know, when you're silent, and, and particularly if you have a reputation for being vocal, people want you to be vocal in all aspects of these things. In our, our show, we've had a few hip-hop artists on who have been very vocal in the wake of the George Floyd death. Hip hop has never been one to shy away from the topics of police brutality and racism, of course. But, but when Ice Cube and others came out in support of President Trump, they were also criticized. Would you say that there's no room at all for Republicans or conservatives in hip hop? 
Well, listen, one of the things we've learned over the last four years, Lindsay, is that there is the traditional Republican Party, and the Lincoln Project has done a really good job of distinguishing that they're very different than Trumpism, which people say has taken over the conservative party. There was a time when George W. Bush was in the White House, and black music artists were there regularly. He was a big champion of Black Music Month and all that came with it. But in recent uh, you know, days, we realized that the October surprise for election 2020 really was hip-hop. I mean, Ice Cube, who had his own admission, only became interested in politics in March, took it upon himself to write a contract for Black America uh, and tried to take meetings with both administrations. Well, he blew off a meeting with Kamala Harris, but aligned himself with Trump. And Lindsay, I'm Black, you're Black. I don't think either one of us got a call from Ice Cube to ask if he could speak on our behalf. And then Lil Wayne, who we knew was problematic ever since you did that interview with him that actually resurfaced and went viral, we don't believe he could even vote. But he aligned himself with Trump, and now we think we he might be part in shopping. So listen, hip hoppers make a lot of money. The, the music has always been about injustice and, uh, and advocating for social change. And it's been a bit glaring for the fans of the genre to see some people who had been a champion of folks talking about that injustice now turning their back and aligning themselves with people who don't even like their existence. All right, here's a bit of a curveball for you. What's your message out there for the fan who has canceled one of their favorite artists, either because they disagree politically or because they've been silent about a controversial issue. Listen, you know, money is power. And if you are going to use your dollars widely, wisely, I can understand if you don't want to support somebody that uh, there's social issues and things that stand in direct opposition of who you are as a human. You know, if it's just politics, you know, Lindsay, I have a lot of Republican friends. I identify as a Democrat, but I love debating policy and, and, and White House workings and things like that with my political friends. That's different than things that stand against who I am as a black man. And so I do say that if you are consuming somebody who's not aligned with your principles, with your morals, with your values, then maybe you should withhold your dollars. But one of the things we have to do is give people the grace to evolve. We got to give people the room to go the arc. There's some people who just aren't informed and, and, and we have to work with them to get them informed, allow them to grow. Because here's the thing, there was one time that Kanye was on television saying that George Bush doesn't care about black people. Who would have ever thought that he would then be aligned with Trump and Taylor Swift would be the wokest of them all. <laughs> Times change and people change and we've got to give them the grace to go on that journey. Give them the grace. We all need that. John Murray, thank you so much and happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving, Lindsay.